great uh, to be uh, with you. I'm your host, Mike Pesci, as we continue to talk about some of the big top stories as well as headlines uh, that people are talking about. Well, if uh, you have been a stargazer this past month, uh, you have really, really been in for a treat. Uh, just a month ago, of course, we had the solar eclipse, and now uh, so many will be looking uh, to the northern lights as well. But there's so much going on beyond that, including some potential for solar storms. So let's bring in our next guest here of this hour. This is meteorologist Nick Stewart. Thanks so much for being with us as uh, we talk about uh, what is going to be happening in the skies. Yeah, it's been a very wild like month or so, right? Between the total solar eclipse, we had the weather going on, of course, the auroras. It's been a while since we've had a pretty big show like this one. The last one, probably April of last year. And, you know, fingers crossed, weather permitting, uh, we should have a pretty good show here coming up around sundown in about two hours or so. Yeah, and explain to our viewers uh, just uh, where uh, the best uh, locations will be to view uh, this great phenomenon. Yeah, definitely the best places to view this a uh, particular Northern Lights show will be the northern, about half of the United States, assuming the forecast is kind of what we expect. Uh, basically, you know, from uh, St. Louis over toward maybe Washington, D.C., and out west, maybe toward like Northern California. If you're kind of along and north of that line, uh, that tends to be about the favorable conditions uh, for this particular show this time around. Uh, that's, again, all courtesy of the Space Weather Prediction Center, who does kind of working on a lot of this. And the forecast is actually already verifying. We are at that, what's known as a uh, G4 or level four or five storm here uh, on planet Earth. Europe already getting a great show. The biggest question is, will that persist after sundown? All forecasts are kind of leaning towards the fact that it should be a pretty good show here in North America. Yeah, it really will be. And I know so many people are going to be uh, looking uh, to the skies uh, to see this here. And, and it, um, how long, when's the last time we saw such a show like this to this magnitude, would you say? I'd say probably the closest analog to this particular show, if you go back to April of last year, it was April, I believe, 23rd into 24th of 2024. Uh, that was probably the last, you know, best show that we had. I was actually in eastern Iowa at that point in time, and we had the northern lights basically right overhead, very visible uh, for us. So that was probably the last good show that we had, so just over a year ago. And this is kind of what we would expect in these kind of bigger storms, uh, because we are near the peak of the space weather, the, uh, the solar cycle right now. It is about that maximum period of activity. And so this is not that unusual. It's definitely rare in the sense that we don't get this high of a storm like, you know, every week. Uh, but, you know, we've definitely seen these storms in the past. Yeah, and this is uh, truly something where, I mean, communications, uh, they even put out those warnings uh, that some communications could be interrupted here. What, what do we know about that? Yeah, there definitely could be some impact to, um, especially if you're like a ham radio operator, operator, those high frequency radio frequencies, those could be kind of impacted by the space weather events. Um, there are also other potential issues to say satellites in orbit and things like that. Um, however, this isn't, you know, that extreme of an event. It's definitely pretty strong, definitely a very good show for Northern Lights viewing. But the actual impact to like satellites in space and all of that, we have a pretty good understanding of how to mitigate the impact of those kind of things. I do know the Space Weather Prediction Center has been in very close contact with all the different satellite operators. Everyone is very ready. You know, we've had, you know, 48 to 60 hours to really prepare for this. And there's a lot of things that can be done to mitigate any major issues from this event. Now, uh, Nick, uh, what I want to know about the Northern Lights, is it easy uh, to photograph? Because, uh, you know, every July 4th, you get so many people that try to photograph uh, fireworks and you get fuzzy images and everyone's trying to post it. It's like, just enjoy the show. What about uh, what about the Northern Lights? Yeah, I would say the same thing. Just enjoy the show. You know, everyone has a smartphone and things like that. You can. A lot of the modern phones... Um, such as like, you know, Apple higher end iPhones, or I use a Google Pixel, for example, they have those night modes. And assuming you can see the Northern Lights with your naked eye, your camera on your phone actually will pick it up pretty easier. Uh, it's much better to pick it up with like a kind of more professional camera, like a DSLR with the right settings, you know, a longer exposure, higher ISO, things like that. You can actually really break out a lot more of the color than what you can see with your eye. But even just your smartphone, if you're far enough north, uh, you probably could get a get a pretty good view of the northern lights with your phone. 
And what about uh, for those that are up in the sky? I mean, can a pilot, do pilots get to see this as well? I, uh, what, what's, the, what's the latest on that? Yeah, sometimes the pilots get the best shows. You know, they don't have to worry about clouds. They don't have to worry about sitting outside when it's really cold. Uh, thankfully, obviously, the weather, we're in May. It's not that cold here in North America. Uh, but yeah, the pilots, they get some great shows. And the best thing for pilots, if you're doing kind of those polar routes, so over the far northern or far southern portions of our uh, planet, uh, you don't really even need that strong of a storm to see the northern lights. Uh, we've had many times where you can see them just on kind of, you know, mundane, solar events that we kind of see more periodically. Pilots get a great show. Um, I've seen some pretty amazing photos from pilots, uh, either on X or Facebook and things like that. Yeah, and we're showing some video right now uh, from uh, the ground level. And I mean, just even on, I, I can just imagine what it is for the pilots that have, have don't have to worry about the clouds, like you said there. But I mean, from the ground, it, it's it's truly fascinating. Yeah, honestly, the video like that almost captures it a bit better than actual photos because video, it's a little bit more truer to color. You know, sometimes you see those photos with those bright reds and bright greens. Those are a little bit overdone. The camera can see a lot more than your eye, but the video, that, that picture you're showing right there actually shows a little bit better closer to life. That's probably taken with a smartphone. Kind of a better idea of what the colors will actually look like. But yeah, I mean, if you're flying, that's probably the best way uh, to you know avoid any weather issues and things like that, especially if you can catch a, a space flight or a, a plane ride somewhere. I know a lot of people have took a plane ride for the eclipse, flying through the eclipse path, you know, why not fly through the Northern Lights? Yeah, there you go. Nick Stewart, thanks so much for joining us on Live Now from Fox. You got to love uh, when uh, Mother Nature and Earth really put on a show, and uh, I know a lot of people will be looking forward to it. Thanks for breaking it down for us on this Friday evening. We appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. You take care.